Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, we all know that Hamza Yousaf is not the brightest button in the box. And we also know he has trouble counting anything more than about six, and he really is in trouble. And so it's not surprising, of course, that he is, and described as being, financially illiterate, economically illiterate. And it wouldn't surprise me if just plain old illiterate. But Murdo Fraser, the SNP, so, uh, the, sorry, the Conservatives uh, business spokesman and businessman himself, of course, has said that the only way that uh, Hamza Yousaf can make the promises at the conference come true is with massive cuts elsewhere. He just literally cannot tax enough to raise the revenue to pay for his promises. And the only way this can happen is these massive cuts. So what is he going to cut? Well, of course, that's only Murdo Fraser making uh, mischief, I think, because I, I, I think, and as I say before, they sit at these things, and especially at conference, and they can make these announcements at conference because they just, ah, they're just lies. Oh, we're going to put this there. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And they make it all look marvellous, but there's no commitment to it because it is just buns for elephants for the people in the conference. If he said these things in Holyrood, He'd have to back them up with facts and figures and reports. And that's why they're never said in Holyrood and only ever said at conference. But we'll take a look at this to see why people are thinking that the SNP and particularly Hamza Youssef are financially illiterate. Here goes. Now, of course, it's quite unfair for me to say that he is illiterate. He has read a book, just the one. We all know what book that is. But of course, it wasn't written in English. So he's uh, he does struggle a little bit, you know. But uh, for a very stupid man, he's come very far. You must admit, he's done very well for someone with a very low IQ. Uh, the trouble is, of course, he's imposing that very low IQ on the whole of the country. Uh, and that isn't a good thing on the whole, is it? Anyway, the financially illiterate SNP will need to make massive spending cuts to fund Hamza Yousaf's conference promises. But as I say, they're not really promises. Uh, they're just announcements that sound good, little soundbite, get them a bit of news, you know, things like that. None of these things will ever come to pass. If they were genuine, if they were real, if they were in any way uh, going to happen, he would have announced them in Holyrood. But the trouble there is he has to present them. They have to be questioned. Uh, they have to pass through committees. It's all sorts of things. People question the funding, all that. Say what you like in conference. Nobody cares. Oh, look, everybody claps like a performing seal and then they go home and then they forget about it because none of these things are ever going to pass. 300 million for the NHS. My ass. Anyway, Scottish Tory business spokesman Murdo Fraser pointed out that there is only one way for the First Minister to pay for his hundreds of millions of pounds of spending commitments and that's through cuts elsewhere in the Scottish budget. Indeed. I mean, he's talking 300 million for the NHS. He, and now that Mathers has just announced another 50 million uh, for uh, the ambulance service. But he didn't, he didn't say that in Parliament. He didn't say that in Holyrood. No, no, no. That was off the record. That was that was to uh, journalists outside. So you know exactly what's going to happen. And then he's going, oh, council tax freezes here. We're going to put that in there. We're going to do this over here. All of these things at conference, all of, none of them on the floor of Holyrood because people would question them. And he doesn't want questions because questions need answers. And this is Hamza Yousaf. Answers aren't his thing. He can't think. Anyway, Hamza Yousaf will have to make some massive spending cuts in his first budget as First Minister in order to fund his SNP conference promises. Uh -huh. It's, like I say, never going to happen, is it? Um, and an opposition MSP has warned this. The SNP leader wanted to end his first summit on a positive and announced a council tax freeze to the applause of the 14 guys that turned up and a dog that rolled on its back, chased its tail and shit on the stage. Uh, however, his proposals have been roundly rejected by those they affect most. Local authorities. Oh, yeah, no. And breaking the uh, the Verity House agreement. They were right. They were mad about that. Cosler going through the roof on this one. Um, they're going, how dare you? How dare you break this? We've worked hard to get this agreement. And then the first thing you do is go and break it because you're a moron. And the thing is, I mean, I joke and I keep saying, oh, he's a moron. I'm not just doing this for the purposes of videos. 
He's a moron. You see it. You see it, the mouth open and you hear the stupid come out. He says things he can't possibly deliver. He says things he obviously doesn't understand. And he says things that gainsay what his own party have done. The guy has no idea. It's almost as though the link, you know, it should go from brain to filter to mouth. He's got no filter. It's the brain to the mouth. There's nothing in between saying, don't say that. Or you better think about that before we say that. Or for heaven's sake, that's not what you said yesterday. There's none of that. It's just like, I'm going to have a random thought and out it pops. And he's representing the country. It's, it's just ridiculous anyway. Anyway, Scottish Tory business spokesman Murdo Fraser has pointed out that the litany of vows, pointless, unachievable vows, made by Mr Yusuf in Aberdeen would need to be paid for somehow. No, they won't because they will never come to pass, will they? Uh, with a budget black hole already hitting 600 million for the year, uh, it will now be over a billion due to the financial promises made. That's just this year's. He's already got the billion from last year that they haven't even sorted out yet. Two billion already? Unbelievable. Well, it's not unbelievable, is it at all? Why oh, kidding? It's not unbelievable, is it? Anyway, he said, who wouldn't want to see their council tax frozen when the household bills are rising? That's the cunning idea inspired by Hamza Yousaf's surprise announcement made the decision made just as he was standing up. 20 minutes, I've got to go and say something. I've got nothing in here. They're not going to applaud this. This is rubbish. Oh, I know. And that's literally his plan, his thoughts. You had, uh, what's her name? The stupid one. Um, Shona Robinson comes out and said, oh, uh, no, we discussed it. We discussed it in cabinet a couple of weeks ago. You know, and all that rubbish. Well, that's funny because the bloody civil service didn't know about it. And they're the one that writes up the, the minutes of the meeting. And if they didn't know about it, it's because it wasn't discussed in, in um, cabinet, was it? Honestly, they, they just can't help but lie. And even when they know they're going to be caught out in the lies, they still do them. Uh, anyway, it looks like that particular plan has been consigned to the overflowing trash can of policies left over from Nicola Sturgeon's time in office. Hamza Youssef is becoming accustomed to welching on the prospectus that got him elected as SNP leader. He said, that we, you know, we come and leave, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do all 100 things. I'm the best thing since sliced bread and all that. Of course, he's not. He's rubbish. And he hasn't done a thing. Not one policy. And that's, that's not surprising. But it's just, it's going to get worse, right? Since this government, I don't mean since the SNP government back in 2007. I mean, since the last election, this government this term of government, they haven't got one thing through that's been beneficial. Virtually every policy has been an, a, a green policy. Virtually every policy has failed, often explosively, spectacularly badly failed, expensively failed. Look at DRS, millions upon millions. It's not over yet. They're going for compensation. They're talking about, oh, when we bring it into 2025, even the UK government now think it's going to be pushed back to 2027 because it's that complex. So if it was always going to be that complex, why did you give the job to Jeffrey, a moron, even more moronic than Hamza Yusuf? Hamza Yusuf towers there like an intellectual genius next to Jeffrey. Anyway, um, Murdo was saying, Murdo Fraser was saying, the unanswered question here for the rest of us is how all this will be funded. The devil is not in the detail on this one. It's like the neon sign in the headline. If councils have been proposing average council tax rises of 5% next year to fully fund the shortfall in their finances, it will cost in excess of 400 million. That's a lot of money to be found and might not even cover the rising costs facing local authority budgets across the country. Now, 5% isn't even uh, inflation. And if they went to an inflation rise, you're looking 8%, you're looking 750 million, so three quarters of a billion before you start, plus inflation going forward. It's a billion pounds. You're looking already being two billion in the hole, and now you want this. Well, including the two billion will be the rise anyway. You could be looking two and a half billion in the hole. No way of getting it back. The only way you can do it is to increase taxes so high that everybody leaves the country if they can, or at least moves their assets out so they can't be touched. You know, it, the man is an economic moron. And that's the trouble. And we all know it. We all know it. Um, Anyway, the council tax announcement has split the SNP even more, with Nat Councillor Shona Morrison hitting out of the lack of consultation with local authorities. And former Health Secretary Jean Freeman, who cares what she says, 
I won't carry on that line. I might get myself in trouble, but it rhymes with uh, murdering Mitch. Uh, anyway, she's confirming that she does not support the freeze either. Even Shona Robinson had troubles trying to stand up for her boss and spin it in a good way and basically made a pig's ear of that. Uh, anyway, he pointed out that they will need to find £600 million for the budget black hole, as well as £400 for the council tax freeze, £100 million for the NHS, plus the £300 million he announced at conference, plus the further £50 million Matheson announced for the, uh, NA, uh, for the ambulance drivers. It's just all over the place, and they've got no way of raising this money. And they're not getting any extra out of the Barnet Agreement. That's a fixed number, isn't it? Anyway, Mr Fraser called the SNP financially illiterate and added, all will be revealed when the Scottish budget is published in December. As it stands, I doubt that day will provide much pre-Christmas cheer. I think Scrooge before the redemptive dreams. Uh, the First Minister is like the householder who refuses to open the bank statements telling him he's overdrawn, but still can't help fingering the camper van brochures. Oh, bitchy, saucer of milk for table five. Yeah. He's right. Anyway, I'm going to come up and we'll round off. Hamza Yousaf is like the man with his credit card and he knows he's just lost his job and he can't pay it. And he's like, oh, I'm never going to be able to pay this, but I need to. And so he goes shopping and he'll go and buy all the best of this, the best of that, 15 steaks and all this, blah, blah, blah. Throws it all on his credit card knowing he'll just cancel a credit card, lose his credit rating. He won't care. Uh, at least he's eating well for a few weeks. Uh, and after that, come what may, try and get another job. But that's where he is, and that's all he's doing. He's not husbanding the resources. He's not looking out for the pennies. He's not counting this. He's not thinking, where can we save money easily? You know, foreign embassy spin doctors, brochures. No, no, no. Blow it all. Blow it all. Independence. Push, push, push. Make me look like the biggest thing ever. Well, you look like the biggest dick ever. Uh, and unfortunately, the people of Scotland are going to pay for this. They're going to pay for this for many years. It's a scorched earth policy. It's going to damage, if not actually destroy, Scotland. And all because... Tiny brained morons have been given the opportunity of power by even bigger morons voting for them. Scotland's getting worse because of the SNP and they're already in because the people of Scotland keep voting for them. Stop it. If you want a better country, vote for anyone other than the SNP. Anyway, here endeth my lesson. I will stop now. I will come up. I've got a load more videos and I've got to crack on. But this one, uh, it's been going on a bit while. So thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And I will speak to you later. Bye.